You're watching weekly free tutorials with acrylic artist and instructor Joni Young. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got this fun little whimsical piece that I'm going to be showing you how to paint on an 11 by 14 stretched canvas that's been double primed. I'll post all the colors and brushes I'm using in the description box below. So I'm beginning with titanium white, neon red, and a filbert brush. I'm just going to slightly mix the two colors together, creating a light pink color. I'm going to begin on the bottom portion of the canvas and come in with some little soft circles and pushing and pulling with my brush to create um, the nebula and, and the clouds. I'm carefully leaving some spaces in between that I'm going to come in with some other colors later. So now I'm going to be mixing cobalt blue, titanium white, and turquoise together. I'm going to begin on the middle portion of the canvas, scumbling in that color, and then taking a blending brush that's a little bit damp, I'm going to soften it. Now I'm ready to come in with the next color. I'm using a filbert brush again with dioxazine purple and cobalt blue. Again softening with a large blending brush. You'll notice I'm using an up and down brush stroke rather than going across. Now I'm increasing the amount of dioxazine purple that I'm using as I go up further towards the top of the canvas. And I'm going to come in with a little bit of turquoise with my filbert brush again and start wiggling it around and pulling, creating some more depth to my clouds. I'm going to soften slightly by um, scumbling and using a little bit of white as well. And then take a large blending brush and soften even more. And I'm ready to start adding some more at the top of the sky. Again, dioxazine purple and cobalt blue. It should be the darkest at the very top. Working our way down to the lightest at the bottom. Again, up and down motion with the brush rather than across. Taking a medium sized mop brush, titanium white and turquoise, I'm going to blend soft circles, barely touching that canvas, just lightly dusting to give it sort of an airbrushed, very soft blended effect. I'm breaking it up slightly into the blue and the purple to create another shade. And then I'm just going to dab a little bit and wiggle it around 
or add a little bit of a cloud way up at the top of the sky. Now working wet on wet, you can create lots of different shades and colors and it's it gives you a really nice effect when working on a nebula painting. Gradually adding a little bit more white now. And then dioxazine purple at the very top to create more shadow. What the mop brush does is it allows me to blend very, very softly. Now using a liner brush, I'm taking turquoise and a little bit of water, a little bit of white, and I'm just wiggling in little lines, little squiggly lines here and there to help add some more detail to the sky. So you'll notice that I'm kind of twisting the brush in between my fingers and rolling it around. I'll just do a few more of these and then we're going to begin working on our stars. I recommend practicing on a piece of paper first before um, doing this just to get a good feel for it. It's all on the flick of your wrist so just with water on your liner brush and a little bit of white mixed with purple. And then I'm going to use the same color down below and add some more of those squiggles for some more depth around the clouds and the nebulas. Switching to my filbert brush, I'm going to fill in thicker parts using purple and white. And I'm going to use some red, the neon red again. And then start adding in a little bit more white up here for some more peaks and highlights. So I'm just creating lots of little dabs and half circles. Just building up the color, highlights and shadows. To create this pretty soft pink color I used uh, neon red by Holbein and titanium white. No water. I'm going to pick up a little bit more white and create more highlights. So less pink and red and more white. Small little scoops, half circles. The Filbert is a really nice brush to be able to do this with. And then I'm going to scumble just a little bit up in the middle of the middle portion of the canvas. Now once I do that, I pick up phthalo blue and turquoise. And I'm going to be scumbling that in and around the middle portion and a little bit down on the bottom. Then no water at all again, just straight dioxazine purple. And I'm going to build up more depth and shadow at the top of the canvas and a little bit around the side. Now going right back to my liner brush, neon red and white, I'm going to dab a little dot here and there and then I'm going to very lightly pull and flick, just dragging lightly and lifting off the little bits of paint that we've dabbed on there. So dab and flick. Try to do this as straight as possible. Now the idea is to not have it straight white. We want to have some of the streaks, some of the stars um, the same colors that we've already used in this painting. So some can be purple, turquoise, phthalo blue, red, but mixed in a little bit with the white so that we're creating soft pastel shades. And then you're going to carefully make little tiny stars. I had a hard time with um, my liner brush. I go through liner brushes like crazy. Let me know if you guys are the same way. Um, I have a bad habit of leaving my paintbrushes in the water and not taking them out right away and drying them off. So 
I think that's the reason why I'm going through so many brushes. Um, but yeah, so you're just going to do little dabs and then pull little tiny lines out from all sides of that to create little stars. This is such a pretty magical effect. I really love working on this piece. And then I'm just trying to straighten these out a little bit uh, by using a flat edge brush, a little bit of water, and turning it sideways. And now I'm going to come in and just scumble around with some neon red and white. This is going to be a little bit of a haze around our crescent moon that we're going to add soon. And I'm using the same brush, a flat square brush for this. You could use any brush that you want. And while I've got that color on my brush, I use it for some of the stars. I kind of go back and forth from that to turquoise and blue and purple. Um, so now with straight white, coming in with my shape and it's a little bit hard doing this with how I have my camera set up. Um, uh, it's hard to get right in front of it without blocking it with my head. So I'm doing it from the side slightly and it's making it a little bit difficult, but um, I'm adding extra white where I want to have um, more highlights and then leaving it a little bit darker in between those highlights. And then going back and dabbing my stars again. As you know, with acrylic paint, it tends to dry a little bit darker, um, especially if you've got a little bit of water in your brush. So it, as soon as you put it on, it'll look nice and bright. But then if you give it a few minutes um, or even a few hours, you can notice that as the paint sets in and dries, it's not quite as uh, bright as, as it was before. So quite often I go back and I add more light and shadow where I need to. So again, I'm just doing that light pink soft haze. And then I use a little bit more red and overlap it on part of the blue and the purple. So I'm going to add a few more stars here and there some smaller ones and then back to my square brush with more purple to make my moon really pop out I need to have it darker around the outside of it but you can still see that light pink haze that I've got there and with a liner brush and purple I'm going to just squiggle in some more lines here and there for just to make it more interesting. And then I used a toothbrush. I'm sure you guys have done this before. An old toothbrush with water and white paint. And then I just flick with my finger to get a light, soft spray of stars back there. Um, you could do that. Um, you can use the toothbrush when you're painting snow too to make it look like snow falling. Just a little uh, painting tip and hack for you guys. Just get instant stars or instant snow when you use an old toothbrush. Some people use a paintbrush for it to do the, the pull and flick spray effect, but I, I kind of like the way the toothbrush works a little bit better. I think the hardest part of this whole painting was trying to paint these stars with my horrible <laughs> liner brush. Back to my filbert brush and phthalo blue with purple again. Up at the top, just shading some more. And then I took some red with a purple and the phthalo blue. And we'll just add a few little 
dabs of it and wiggles around these clouds on the bottom. Now taking straight neon purple or light purple violet by Holbein, I'm going to scumble in a bit of that in and around the moon. This is a beautiful color to add as a filter over uh, blues and purples and even turquoise. And back to working on some more stars. I tend to go back and forth on things around my painting just to let them dry and sit for a little bit. And then I come back to them and re-add those highlights or shadows. Okay, now taking my liner brush, blue, purple, and phthalo green, I just slightly outline one side of the moon, and then I'm going to wiggle in some more depth, little half circles, and then pull and flick. I'm just pulling in a little bit of turquoise to some of these stars and coming in with some more pink. Neon red and titanium mixed for this. Scumbling and wiggling a little bit in and around the moon and then full on neon red right there on the tip. I'm going to add little flicks to the stars of this color and along the bottom and some more little white dots for some stars and define the top of my moon right there with some white Adding a little bit of pink around some of these over on this side and then I soften a little bit with my finger just to give it a little blended look. So it's a lot of going back and forth with the small flat square brush and the liner brush. Just got a few more things to do and we're almost done. Okay, so now I'm taking neon orange from Holbein and titanium white and I'm going to pull up in the stars and add it around the clouds on the bottom. And then add a few more highlights to my stars. And some more at the very top. Don't forget to add some stars to the bottom of your painting as well. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you subscribe now and I'll see you next time.